We do. We actually hit 10 on one. Ah. <laughs> okay. I, uh, uh, Jim is here? Uh, no Jim, I guess. Okay, no Jim. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Richard is going to be here shortly, I understand, but in the meantime, uh, we'll get started with uh, first order of business being the minutes. Do I have a motion for approval of the minutes? I shall move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And Jack, you're here for public comment? Oh, I'm here for the friends. You're here for the friends. Are you here for public comments of any kind? That's on my agenda. <laughs> so I'm just checking. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess we'll go right to the director's report, Emily, because Richard's not here and I have nothing to say. So, excellent. All right. right to you. Um, so I do have quite a bit to report today. Mostly good news, which is great. Um, so in terms of our current operations, July was the first month that we started welcoming back small groups, so more than just the one-to-one -one, uh, professional services. We've had some small groups back in, and folks have been thrilled to be back in. Um, so we have our two Mahjong groups back in. The men's book group has started meeting again. We've brought our movie days back in the multi-purpose room and had a full house, which was wonderful. Um, balance boosters started this month in August. Yesterday was the first set of classes. Um, I am not surprised, but happy to report that Balance Boosters is still a tremendously popular class. Um, Sue ended up adding a third session, only planned two, but added a third to accommodate uh, the level of interest that folks had. So we have three classes running um, for four weeks in August, and then we'll um, start a new session for the fall. Um, we are continuing, of course, our one-to-one -one services, and as of yesterday, we welcomed back our Homeless Prevention Council caseworker, um, so someone from Homeless Prevention Council will be here Tuesday afternoons from 1 to 3 um, to just take drop-in meetings. Oh, good morning, Jim. Good morning. Um, to, for anyone <coughs> concerned about housing-related issues. Um, so that'll be every Tuesday afternoon. Um, available, no appointment needed. And it's not an age-limited service, so anyone is welcome to come in and meet with that caseworker. Excuse me, on that note, has there been any impact from the rental moratorium ending? Not that we have heard. Okay. Um, oh, I'm good, how are you? You got enough room? I'm sure there has been. Okay. Um, good to see But we good haven't heard good. people reaching out to us for that specific for that. concern. Okay. Okay. We have had a higher volume, I'd say, of housing concerns. I don't know if it's tied to that or not. So we've been referring a lot of people to Homeless Prevention Council, so I think that helped kind of spur the, the high priority to get someone back in okay. here. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, we've continued our lunch distribution. Um, our plan for that is to continue through September. That also coincides with when our FEMA funding is set to expire that has supported the higher capacity for that meal program, um, and we're planning to bring on-site lunches back in October. So that's kind of where things stand meal-wise. We are planning some pretty significant um, ramping up in our on-site programs for the fall. We're planning to bring back more of the fitness classes. I've been talking with Charlie Abate, who leads the super fit and senior fit classes. That's probably the class I've had the most questions on since we first shut down in March of 2020. People are very eager for that to come back. Um, so we're, we're tentatively planning for mid to late September as the start of the first session uh, for that program. So I know folks will be excited about that. We're hoping to bring Tai Chi classes back, um, both a new beginner class and an advanced class. I've been working with VNA to try to bring in some more evidence-based programs and fitness programs. I'm not sure that that will be in place in time for September or maybe just not in time for the newsletter for September, um, but I'm hopeful that those programs will be in place as well. Um, and again, the lunch program will be a, a big change for us bringing that back on site. We will have to drop our capacity due to funding, so we're planning to have a capacity of about 45 meals per day once we transition back on site. And we're planning to offer a hybrid model so folks can come in and sit down and enjoy their meal here, or we'll also offer the same meal as kind of a grab and go. So if folks 
still need that mm -hmm. meal source but aren't comfortable yet sitting down with others to, to eat in a congregate setting, they'll be able to do the grab and go. Will that terminate the delivery of lunches? It will, yeah. yes. Um, That's too bad, really, because there are some folks that really can't get out on shores, I know. There are. We're <clears throat> working with those folks to encourage them if they're not already on, say, Meals on Wheels or mm -hmm. some of the other meal delivery options, but it will be a loss that I think people yeah. will feel. Because there's some um, folks in wheelchairs and so on. And right. Just, uh, anyway. Um, no, I agree. I wish it was a program we could sustain indefinitely. Um, Is there any possibility it could be open for volunteers if they want to continue that? I mean, if grab and go, could we grab and, and deliver? I would be happy to explore that option. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, for well, I got a couple of folks I deliver to. I know okay. full well cannot get here and even on a bus, so I would okay. be able to deliver it to them. That way. I would love to explore that further. Okay. Then, yeah, sure. um, especially if you're happy to let us continue relying <laughs> sure. on you for that. Because oh, sure. um, <laughs> I, yeah, I do think that is going to be a loss for a handful of folks. Mm -hmm. um, so that is our meal plan, and then we're planning, of course, you know, just our regular series of a handful of um, one-time events. So this in July and August, yeah. Men's breakfast. I'm <laughs> I had a lengthy conversation with Linda yesterday about what this transition would look like for meals, um, and I think we're going to try and get through October and see how getting meals back on site goes, and then eagerly look forward to men's breakfast and women's breakfast coming oh, back and supper club too. Awful hungry for bacon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, likewise. <laughs> <laughs> Always my two favorite days of the month. <laughs> um, so that is our plan. Um, and then we will, again, have a series of one-time events. We're also, I'm excited to report our COAST, the COA directors from across the Cape. Um, we had implemented that remote programming collaborative throughout COVID when we were all, you know, more <clears throat> shut down. And we are planning to resume that in October so that we can maintain that kind of regional collaboration so that someone from P-Town can come to an event <laughs> hosted through Harwich, and vice versa, Harwich can attend something hosted through P-Town um, to both help folks who aren't comfortable coming out and just maintain that partnership. So um, we are planning a couple of remote programs beginning in October, and we'll also advertise the other offerings from the other CAPE COAs. Um, so I think that's mostly our plan for scaling up for the fall. The other changes, um, for the van, we'll probably increase the capacity a little bit. We've been at, you know, four or five for now. I think we'll bump it up to about six or seven. Um, mm -hmm. But as we increase the number of people who can go on any individual trip, we're going to have to remove some of the flexibility in the trip options mm -hmm. because six people can't all say, I want to go here, here, and here mm -hmm. on my trip. Um, so it's kind of a push-pull there. Um, we've been very, very flexible when someone has wanted to make the extra stop at the sure. pharmacy or the bank, or, um, and we'll have to pull back on that a little bit. So okay. we'll really outline what that schedule will look like and where there's flexibility and where there is not in our newsletter that goes out for September, okay. October. Um, and coinciding with ending the lunch delivery program we're hoping to transition some of those drivers into our volunteer medical driver program which we're hoping to get back off the ground so now that you know restrictions are further loosened um, and vaccination rates are higher we're hoping to accommodate more medical rides through that volunteer program um, i'm sure you all recall that that program is very labor intensive it requires both background checks, driving record checks, copies of their vehicle insurance. Um, they have to have an inspection done by our DPW of their vehicle. Um, so it's kind of a, a labor intensive process to get any individual driver up and running. So we're planning to start that process in September of getting everyone's checks and paperwork and, and vehicles inspected and that kind of thing so that we can run that yeah, program I, again. I volunteer for that. Thank you. Oh, excellent. Any chance you can buy us new cars? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that right in the budget, Ralph. <laughs> Special town meeting article. <laughs> um, so that is our plan, and that will also kind of coincide with being less able to accommodate medical rides on the van as we have a more set schedule. So those kinds of things are all happening in tandem. Um, so that's our plan, largely, for September, October. I don't know if anyone has any questions or feedback on those, those things. Yeah, sounds good. Right. Um, I am thrilled beyond belief to report that we have a signed lease agreement for our new 14 passenger van um, with Cape Cod Regional Transit Authority. So this has been in the works 
since May of 2019. So it's been wow. a little over two years. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it has officially been, it was voted by the, our Board of Selectmen and signed by the CCRTA administrator. Yeah. So that is, and it's insured and inspected and ready to go. Um, sure. So that is a 14 passenger van. That's the largest van we've operated thus far. So it does increase our capacity just a little bit, which is great. Um, and our drivers are very excited to get that on the road as well. So I'm thrilled to report that. Um, any questions on the van? Is this in addition to the two we have? So um, we'd had two vans leased through CCRTA. Mm -hmm. Our larger one had to be pulled off the road okay. in October of 2019, I believe. Um, and Cape Destinations gifted us a van around that in that same month mm -hmm. to make sure we maintained our capacity. So now that we've received the new leased vehicle from RTA, we'll return the the vehicle that Cape Destinations okay. gifted. Well, that so that leaves with two. Then. Still two okay. vans: one small, the eight passenger, and then this, the fourteen okay. passenger. Yeah, so we'll still have two, um, which is great. Uh, as is. Uh, always a painful process. We are in the process of procuring our newsletter contract. Um, our, we've always done annual contracts in the past, so our fiscal year 21 contract expired with this edition, the July-August edition of the newsletter. Um, so I am doing it a little bit differently this time. I'm pursuing a two-year contract in the hopes of avoiding this labor-intensive process. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see the attached project specifications were in your packet. Basically the same thing, six editions per year, same quantity, same timeline, turnaround time. Um, so I've solicited quotes from four vendors. Quotes are due tomorrow. Um, and our next deadline would be, is planned to be August 20th. So I'm hoping to get a contract signed and turned yeah. around in time to meet that print deadline. The newsletter has been fabulous. Mm -hmm. It is a labor of love, that is yeah, for sure, yeah, but yeah, certainly it, it, a lot of really. people rely on it. Yeah. Um, so it's, well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so yes, we're excited about that. Um, and then staffing updates. Um, this kind of ties into that sheet I just passed around. Um, <coughs> administration has begun holding small group department head meetings, so they're breaking department heads into smaller groups, basically with department heads that have similar interests, so it was mostly community center mm -hmm. departments met on July 14th. Um, I know back, I think at our May meeting, I had reported the update that I'd met with Megan and administration was not going to be supporting our staffing reorganization at that time for the program specialist one that I was proposing mm -hmm. to reclassify to a program specialist two. When I met with Megan, that was in April, um, she had said that um, administration might reconsider it in six to seven months. Um, and I'd had the option to either forego waiting that six months mm -hmm. and to post the program specialist one, taking the reorganization off the table, or to post for a, like a temporary admin person. Okay. Um, so when we met on July 14th, you can see on that agenda, there was discussion of open positions. Um, and later on in the meeting, a discussion for planning for reorganization or staffing changes. So I took the opportunity at that meeting to bring this issue up again, um, to kind of go through the process to date that funding was available, the position was vacant, and so that created this opportunity to reassess departmental needs and staffing needs, mm -hmm. um, but was told very authoritatively that the answer was no. So, <laughs> so I think at this point I have exhausted my options. Um, so we did have a temporary admin person in the office for the last couple of weeks, but she um, is transitioning back just to the building department because they have new staffing shortages there. So at this point, we'll be posting a temporary admin position that's COA specific just to get someone in. Um, and then I think really my <coughs> only option at this point is to post for the program specialist one position. Um, so that's my plan going forward, but I just wanted to give you that update. I know I've tried to keep you up to date on, on the process so far. Um, so I don't know if you have any thoughts or, or questions on that. What's the issue, money? I have funding available um, for this year and future years. So um, I don't think it's money. Um, I know that all the unions are in negotiations, so I don't know mm -hmm. if there's a concern that changing that position would impact upon 
negotiations or if it's just not the priority among mm -hmm. staffing town-wide. Um, but I do have funding available now. Um, the funding is there, but we... And <clears throat> just won't let us spend it. Is that it? That does seem to be the, the situation that we find ourselves in. Um, how about, how is your office, situ office help situation going? Um, so we do, we have onboarded new volunteers. We're still looking for a few more volunteer hours. Um, okay. We're fine. We have a lot of folks who've joined to do like one shift per week, which is great. Um, so it just still leaves a few gaps. Sure. Um, or more folks are going on vacation, enjoying the summer. Um, so covering behind them when they're right. away. Right. Um, so that is still an ongoing volunteer need for us. Um, so then the other thing I wanted to mention, so as you'll see from this agenda from that department head meeting, um, we're kind of discussing fiscal year 23, but also the out years. And administration did ask me to seek board input um, in terms of budget priorities or ideas or any potential capital projects you were interested in for you know the next five years. So anything immediate or for the next five years. So I didn't have any expectation that we'd cover that ground or come up with specific recommendations today, but I did want to start that conversation. Um, so I don't know if you have any preliminary thoughts or if you just want me to put it on an agenda for a future month. Well, you know, one of the things that um, probably for this building, it would be not just Council on Aging, mm -hmm. but probably, uh, you know, the whole building. When we did the um, appreciation luncheon last time we did it out in the back mm -hmm. we, there was a lot of talk there about uh, at some point putting maybe a, a, a rear deck of some yeah, sort yeah, sure. you know onto the back mm -hmm. that would facilitate you know those kinds of things and apparently Orleans has something along they that do. line yeah it's yeah. beautiful yeah. yeah and I was thinking about something like that might be in terms of capital improvements yeah you know that might be something worthwhile especially with COVID and all that this would be an out Right. outdoor venue that would allow more things to happen definitely so um, yeah I'd like to I'd like to see that okay you know, consider great I will definitely bring that up um, something that's been on my radar I think since I started I would love to put in um, wheelchair accessible raised veggie garden beds in the back that oh. were both um, you know for seniors to do gardening work but also to then support our nutrition program um, so I'm gonna Plan to propose that as well. Great. Yeah, that would be great if they got it all going together. That would right. be wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Where would you put those? Um, I've done a kind of walkthrough with Carolyn in the past when she's entertained my whims, um, <laughs> and there's some space in the back, um, closer to the COA side parking lot, um, that I think isn't used for other things that we've discussed. But of course, it would involve planning and site plans sure. and DPW mm -hmm. and conservation oh, and yeah. um, all those yeah. right various stakeholders involved in that decision making um, exactly. but that's kind of where I envision it when I just picture it in my mind <laughs> yes so I don't know if anyone has other things they wanted to discuss on that today or just to keep it in your minds and I'll put it as an agenda topic for next month yeah that would be great okay yeah wonderful thank you um, and then I think the last thing under my report was just the volunteer needs. So um, the reception area. Oh, I'm sorry, Joey. I just I dropped something right on your foot. Um, and so we're looking for another about eight to twelve hours per week. And then we are still in need um, of some lunch drivers just to support us through September. Um, again, that's about a 60 to 90 minute commitment per day, and it could be one to two days a week, or it could just be fill-in coverage for our regular drivers. And then, of course, if folks were interested in driving generally and they wanted to start with the lunch program and maybe transition to driving to medical appointments, um, that would be something we were looking for as well. So I think that sums up our volunteer mm -hmm. needs and concludes my report. So, so who do we talk to, Julie? Yes, Julie would be okay. the best point of contact. I'd be contact. willing to take another day or two. Really? Yeah. Oh, Ralph, you're too good to us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me through that. <laughs> <laughs> I call it my bathroom brigade. Bathroom brigade. I think people get to visit 14 women in the course of a morning. <laughs> Night clothes. <laughs> that is unique for you, Ralph. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
Okay. They're all set? That's it for me, unless anyone has okay. questions. Do we have any old business to bring up? Any to discuss? Jack, you want to talk to us? Sure. Okay. Yeah, just a couple couple things. Sure. Uh, as you know, we cut back our service totally based on what was going on on the East Coast. And uh, the drivers are hot to try. That's wonderful. And so hopefully we'll be able to get that back up on the road and um, we remove the insurance for a while to save money, which was a prudent thing to do. Uh, well, I think that, you know, the, the, there are half a dozen more or less people who are willing to help our drive a bus, which is good. Very good. Um, we're having a board meeting next Wednesday, and uh, Carolyn informed me that it'll be in room five, and the agenda will be going out tomorrow or the next day. Um, other than that, everybody's healthy uh, on our side, and uh, hopefully that will continue and we won't have any more major interruptions. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Okay, under new business. <clears throat> anybody have anything under new business? Okay, we'll go around the table. You got anything, Angie? No. No? Jim? No. Nothing? Well, um, the fire department is going to be working with the friends of the COA for a lockbox program. So oh. they, um, yeah, these the friends bought 30 lockboxes and they had a lottery. 38 people signed up. So really? the fire association. Yeah picked up the rest of the eight so everybody can get one. Oh, excellent. So we're going to work with, I believe we'll be at your meeting next Wednesday, Captain Smith Great. and or myself, um, to just present our plan with getting those installed with our fire inspector over the next month or so. That's that great. That's awesome. That's great. I think that that brings up a point about what is our longer term plan to uh, have this program. Okay, so, you know, 10 years from now, do we want to be in this, still doing this, or, mm. you know, is it just a one-year thing? But I'm going to look to you guys for Yeah, some, see how this one goes, yeah. and if there's more people in, you know, in need. Because yeah. Yeah. It, it, the lockbox helps us from breaking their doors down to get in there exactly. if there's a non-emergency. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so. well, I, I had my nephew yeah. go through that with me. Yeah. Like, you know, I said, what do I need this? He's like, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, buy one. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, Yeah, we are too. We're happy that it's Hopefully, we can get, get uh, some support when we want to do this in the future. So. I guess there was some some concern about the security of something like that. You know, who yeah. has the key and only, how to get only in? The only the fire department. Yeah, only the, the police, fire the police department. don't even yeah. have a key to it. It's yeah. just a fire department specific key. Right. So anybody who has a medical alarm yeah. mm -hmm. has to have one by, really? by a town bylaw because okay. people set them off in error all the time. Sure. Oh, so, yeah. So we don't want to go in there. And do damage if we don't. We just, oh yeah, you know, really. unlock the, the the home key is inside the box, and we you know, sure. Knock no, on that the makes door perfect and, sense. I you know, yeah. have, have to explain it all to me. Yeah. I just jumped right on it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> no replacing the door. Yeah. Yeah. No replacing yeah. the door. Right. That's what I'm sticking. <laughs> <at>. <laughs> Anything from, from you, Judge? Nothing from me. No. Nothing from you. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> else. Nothing at all. Okay, <laughs> Joanne. Well, I think we should commend Ralph for all the volunteering he does. Oh, I know. Yes, yes absolutely. absolutely. And to thank him for the lovely hydrangeas in yes. yes. the office. <laughs> More I'm people comment on well, them. Yes. I'm retired. They're too nice not to share. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep them all to myself. In my <laughs> okay, well, I guess that Rich is not going to be able to jump. Yes, not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> this is only one of those meetings. <laughs> 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 I shall move. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right. We are adjourned. All right. Okay. Thank you all. <laughs> I guess everybody hasn't signed in. Oh, yeah. Here you go, Jim. We're just going to wonder what goes on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not counting. You're doing excellent work. <laughs> I'll come out.